this morning. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat into the ground and made mud with his saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sin. Then he went and washed, and he came back able to see. God had his blessing for the reading of his word. Well, Jesus and his disciples have an important discussion there when they see the blind man, and it is can be boiled down to a simple question. Does God punish his children? Does God punish his children? Or to put it more personally, does God punish us? Does God punish me and you? Well, my first instinct when I hear this, and it's always been, it's absolutely not. I've been told since I was very little that God is loving and God wants the very best for us. That God wants us to have all the riches of his creation. All the very best things like love and community, friendship and family. That is what God wants for us. He's too busy wanting those things to punish us. And yet here on Mother's Day and in this past week as I've thought about moms and parents, my mother in particular, my parents in particular, I am, I've thought about this sermon and this idea of punishment. I've thought about all the times when I was punished as a child. I don't know about you, but there are some families where one parent or the other is the one who does the punishing. And that, that results in that, that popular saying we hear so much, you just wait till your father gets home. The father is the one who punishes in that family. I always envy those kids. Because I thought, well, at least they get a little reprieve there. A couple of hours to let things cool down, maybe even be forgotten. My mom never felt like she needed my dad in order to punish me. She caught me jumping on the couch at 4 o'clock. I tell you, I was tried, convicted, and had served half my sentence by 5 o'clock when my father came home. Punishment. Well, it doesn't seem quite fair, does it? Here on Mother's Day, when we think about our mothers, when we honor them, we think about punishment, nobody wants to think about that. In the perfect world, there would be no punishment. All children would act properly all the time, and no parent would ever have to be, have to be the one who punishes their child. And my contention today is that we should spend time giving thanks for punishment. To be punished. You think about that as children, how often we were punished, and when it was done in love, and when it was done effectively, how the purpose of it was to change us, was to help us grow, was to help us learn. Punishment may be one of the least talked about, the most underappreciated gifts that our parents gave us. They punished us because they loved us and they taught us through that punishment. They helped us to grow. I know it's true in my case. I haven't jumped on the couch in years. Well, maybe when there's an intersection and a bad point in the game, I might get up on the couch for a second and then I remember myself and I'm back down again. No, in that way, in so many serious ways, we are the people that we are today because partly of the punishment we receive, just as it's true because of the love. It can mean as much as the most gentle and tender caress. It can mean more to us in many ways. In fact, there are some of us who wish we were punished more by our parents. Because, you know, there's some habit we have now 
that we started when we were a child. And gosh, we think, if our parents just could have nipped that in the bud back when I was a kid, I wouldn't have to worry about it today. I wouldn't have to struggle with it. I wish my parents were tougher on me. Not everybody thinks that. Some people do. I wish my parents were tougher on me. I wish they'd made me study harder. I wish they'd made me volunteer more. I wish they'd brought me to church more often. Well, we do recognize today, and we do give thanks for this aspect of parenting, the willingness to punish a child, and actually to do it in a loving way, in an effective way. Now, I love this. There's, there's some great advice about effective punishment. And it's, it's good for us to hear both as, as parents and grandparents and people who have children in our lives, but it's also good for us to hear, too, today, because we continue as adults to be punished from time to time. What makes punishment effective? How is it a blessing to us? Because it's a blessing when it changes us and it helps us to grow. Well, the experts say that effective punishment is timely. That means it happens soon after the infraction is made. It's also fair. It's consistent from time to time and in a family from child to child. It is fair. It is timely. And then my favorite aspect of effective punishment it is memorable. It's memorable. What is a memorable punishment? It's something the child does not want to have repeated again. And so effective punishment is timely, it is fair, and it is memorable. And when it is these things, and when it is done in love, it is a blessing. It is a gift that our parents give to us. Again, to help us become the people they know that we can become. Okay, well now I'm back to thinking of that question again. Does God punish his children? Does God punish us? Is that a gift that God gives to us? Once again, that first response is, is no. And I think part of that reason is we do live in a society where punishment, it isn't seen as a blessing. It's seen as entirely negative. I was surprised to learn that uh, out of all the states, the 50 states in the United States of America, each and every one has a prison system, a correction system. And each one of those correction systems, as is common with any organization today, has a mission statement. And each has a long list of policies that they follow. Now, in none of the 50 states is punish or punishment mentioned either in the mission statement or in any of the policies. Punishment, strangely, is a black eye. It is not seen as a gift that we may give to someone to help them to grow, to help them to learn. Now, I'm not an expert in teaching. I do have a wife who is a teacher. And I followed a bit of what the, what's studied and what's talked about in teaching, and I know that there's less and less talk about punishment, even less talk about discipline. In fact, if you're studying to be a teacher, you might never read those two words, but you would read the word instead, classroom management. Not punishment, not discipline, but classroom management. And why is that? Well, it's not because of the teachers, it's because of the parents. We don't like the idea of our children being punished, even by their teachers. We don't even like, apparently, in our society, the idea of criminals being punished by the, by the correction system. No, punishment has a black eye, and perhaps that's one reason I have a hard time thinking of God as being one who punishes. But again, it is a gift. It can be a blessing. Well then say, let's say God does punish us. How does that work exactly? How does that happen? If God is going to give us this gift of, of punishing us, of helping us to be better and do better, how exactly does that work in our world? Well, one way I believe it works is through God's created order. You see, God created a world in which actions have consequences. You do something, and something else is likely to happen. Now we think, well, that's the way it had to be. How else could it possibly be? Well, no, it didn't have to be that way. God could have created the world in a completely different way. 
but yet it is a part of the fabric of life, of this world, this universe we live in, that if we do one thing, there is a consequence. Consequences to our actions. Well, so we cheat. And we get caught and we get punished. We betray someone and we lose their trust. We lose their love. We engage in risky behavior and we do it time and time again. And eventually, eventually, we are hurt. We are injured or we are killed because of our risky behavior. How does God give us this gift of punishment? Well, he does it through his created order. And why? Why does God do that? Well, there are two reasons to punish. And we look at the Bible, I mean, we see in the Bible, and we cannot deny that we see God in the Bible punishing his people. In the Old Testament, we see God, and he is pictured as, he is um, expressed as, he's given uh, the title of king or of judge. We say, well, okay, well, why does a king, what does a judge punish? Well, the judge, the king lays down the law and punishes through the judge the people who do not obey the law. And we do that, it happens because of society. To keep society faith, we do it for everyone. All right, that's why the king, the judge, punishes. And you know, Jesus saw this, and he saw this in the Old Testament, and I think Jesus also understood the value of punishment, and how it can be a blessing. But he wanted to use a different image for God as God punishes us. And so he used the image of Father. God the Father. Now, why does a father punish a child? It's not to keep society safe. It's not for everybody. A father, a mother, a parent punishes a child because they love that child. They care for the child. They want the very best for that child. And that is... That is why they punish. I think that's one reason it was so important to express to us that God wasn't just Jesus. Jesus was expressing, God just isn't my father. He is your father too. And so here we have a created order with consequences that God has made for us. And so when we do something foolish, when we do something deceitful, when we do something hurtful, Others suffer. And we can suffer as well. It's a gift that God has given us. How he has given us this gift of punishment to help us to learn, to help us to grow. Is it perfect? No. In this world, it's not perfect. There are the criminals who prosper. There are the people who treat others with such disrespect and never seem to be bothered by that fact. It is not a perfect system. It is only a reflection. So much in this world is a reflection of, of the perfect justice that God has. The perfect love that he has for us. No, it's not a perfect system. And yet, how effective it is. As we look at the world, as we think about our lives, we think about how few times in our lives we've ever gotten away with anything without some sort of punishment, even if it's our own, just our own sense of gnawing guilt about what we have done. God gives us this gift of punishment. He does it through his created order. Just as in with our parents and with our mothers on this day, be grateful for all the hugs, all the meals, all the tenderness, but to be grateful for the punishment as well, where it made us who we are today. But what about being punished for our sins? I mean, what about us doing something bad and God having that button that he presses and zaps us and we pay? God makes us pay for something we have done here on earth. There's got to be punishment for our sins, right? Well, absolutely. Every sin has to be accounted for. And God had to come up with a great punishment for that. 
an effective punishment that matches the sins, every sin of our lives, plus every other person who has ever existed. And how would God do that? God would come up with a punishment, and he would look at his children, and he would say, as some of us have said, with our own children, I can't do it. I won't do it. And so God took a part of himself and came into this world. And even though we were tried and we were convicted and we were absolutely guilty, God took that punishment upon himself. Well, that is a parent's love. No wonder Jesus wanted us to think of God as our father. Just like a parent who sees a child and the child has put themselves through disobedience in some dangerous position. And the parent sees that. And the parent doesn't even think. Doesn't have to reason it out. The parent rushes at the jeopardy of their own lives, risking their own lives. The parent rushes to get that child out of jeopardy. Even if it kills them, they will do it. And so God did for us. Sending his son, a part of himself, into this world. Yes, God punishes us, I believe, through the order that he created in this world, the natural consequences to our actions. And the sins that we have, and to help us learn, to help us grow. But all that we do through disobedience, God has taken that punishment on himself. It can be a blessing to us, absolutely. Punishment can be a wonderful thing. But here's a warning to you. Never mix up suffering and punishment. Never confuse the two, for there is suffering in this world, absolutely. And sometimes that suffering that we're experiencing is coming as a result of something dumb that we have done. But friends, sometimes suffering comes into our lives and there is absolutely no reason for it. And we must not think that God is punishing us in these times. Suffering has simply emerged in our lives the way it emerges in the life of everyone. So what do we do with it? What comfort can we find in our faith when these times emerge? Well, one piece of comfort we can find is that we have a Savior who understands what it is to suffer without deserving that suffering at all. Well, thanks be to God that we have that Savior who understands and let us be sure that in this day and this week ahead and this year to come, we watch our actions. Because in this world God has created, our actions have consequences. And when we suffer those consequences, when that time does come, help us to learn from them. To learn from the mistakes so that we need not repeat it again and we need not suffer and those around us need not suffer. Let us learn. And as we do and as we step closer to God through that learning and we come to understand ourselves and God better through that experience, perhaps we will give thanks but God has given us the good gift of punishment. Let us bow in prayer. Loving God, we do give thanks that you give us opportunities to learn even from our mistakes. Loving God, we give thanks that we have the chance to be comforted by you even when we're facing difficulties that, and struggles suffering that comes upon us for no reason at all. But then God be with all of those on this day who suffer. Bless them and help them to feel your presence in their lives every day. In 
Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.